Hello and welcome to Team Fortress TV with Admirable Commander X, Shinnick and John. We're here for the Asia Fortress Mercenaries Cup 5 Grand Final. It's LJB versus FFS. Commander X, is this your first time in Asia Fortress? <laughs> uh, not my first time watching, my first time casting. Well, that's I remember, always been for the first time. <laughs> Doing it last year, and um, Shunik has uh, got in touch with me in recent weeks to tell me that was happening, that we should do it. And I only remembered to do any promotion for it yesterday. So thanks to those uh, loyal people who have shown up. But uh, Shunik, I'm going to hand it over to you. I want you to tell me about these two teams and about the competition, about what's happening in Asia. All right. So on the blue team, we got LJB. And so first off, we got Ozer on Scout. And Ozer, he's actually been playing like really long time and it dates back like even further than TF2 so he's been playing TFC ever since like the start so he's like really really old mm -hmm. and the other scout HSK um, I've been told that he was actually like quite a prominent and pretty good CS 1.6 player so these guys have quite the history and I remember him from last team mm -hmm. yeah their scout combo is honestly quite strong and on soldiers you got wide and Babel so Babel, from what I've heard, he is a very, very good fag movie editor. You probably have seen some of his works, but <laughs> you guys should search up on YouTube yourself. Now's not the time. And so why he actually has quite a funny history. Like, even though he's a competitive player, um, he was actually quite um, addicted to trading in the past. And then he kind of transitioned to competitive. And so next up on the list, we've got Creep. So Creep is actually... Um, a soldier main, a pocket main, but he has transitioned to demo and it's not like the Koreans have pressured him to play the demo. He's actually kind of gotten interested in playing demo, so he's made quite a good switch and we'll see if he actually performs as well as he could. And, you know, we'll see what he does. We'll see how well he plays from the kind of short notice he's had, I guess. Is and... he new OPD? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Actually, I want to explain. OPD has been taken by the grasp of uh, Maple Story and Diablo 3, so he's actually what? not here to play with us, and you know, of all the games, Maple Story, uh, I feel people the same love as OPD. everyone else. I want to see people spam <laughs> OPD in Twitch chat and we'll bring them back from Maple Story, what the hell? <laughs> That's what I've been saying to life as well, but I guess it's not happening. And the last player on LJB is W40K Life. He is definitely one of the oldest Asian players, and he's been around since like forever. You know, he's always been in the top Korean teams, and he's always the medic. Like his calls, and you know, people always describe the teams that he kind of you know leads as like a really really well oiled machine, and it's really hard to kind of break through their defense. That's what other people have described to me. LJB is, and. You know, aside from his leadership skills, he's still a really solid medic and, you know, always hitting the clutch arrows and, you know, the ain't good medic overall. Yeah. And what, what nation are these guys all from? They're representing? Right, so blue team is literally all Koreans, but on the red team we got a mix of some Singaporeans and some Malaysians, which is, you know, quite interesting. And it's curious to see how the kind of different languages merge together to make a really good team, you know, how the language barriers doesn't, you know, affect them as mad, as badly as, you know, other teams. Is there any rivalry between nations in Asia? Like in, in Europe, you know, we've got football and uh, a lot of different <laughs> nations hate each other or just, you know, just for fun. But is it is it that sort of same idea in Asia? Do the Singaporeans hate the Koreans? Uh, I don't think I can say hate, but there's definitely a rivalry, you know, the Koreans and the Japanese have been scrimming each other since like the start of Asia Fortress and there's been quite a rivalry there and the Singaporeans have never really made a team that could compete against the Koreans and, you know, the grand final is who we are, the Singaporeans have finally answered the call, you know, they're here to play against the Koreans, maybe they're going to change history, Singaporeans are finally going to, you know, get recognized for being good at this game. <laughs> so Tell me about the red team and Dirty Commander X. It's fine. Talk to me, Commander X. <laughs> I just want to say, is there, is there a favorite? Is there like a clear, are the Koreans for clear favorite then? Well, from past and you know what we see from how they usually scream, the Koreans seem to be the favorites. Like everyone seems to expect the Koreans to be the winners here. So it's even more exciting for me to root for the Singaporeans, you know. But I'll run down the FFS roster before we take too long. So on the soldiers, we got TJ and Jazzer. So 
uh, Jazz is currently tagged as uh, Abel, that's his real name. And these two soldiers, um, I can't really say TJ's a long time player, but Jazzer definitely is. He's been around for quite a while, and TJ, surprisingly, he's actually one of the few people who seem to play like TF2 every single day, and he's only played for like a year now, but here he is, Stiff One. <laughs> I like it. He has, he has some, he has the commitment. He's keen. Yeah, he has the commitment to do it. And on uh, the scouts, we've got um, Toshihiko and Krabby Patty. So these two are really old players as well. Um, Krabby Patty has been around for quite a while in the Asian scene as well. And Toshihiko, he used to play soldier, but um, recently he's been transitioning to scout. And it's been quite a good transition, I would say. Just playing against him in pugs and you know scrims that over, he's he's pretty pretty damn good, I would say. And I'll say the same for Krabby Patty. And before before we get on too long, I can hear the players already just complaining to me. Okay. Yeah, tell um, them to go live. We yeah. got Rufus and we got King and Lionheart on demo and medic, and not much to say. You know, solid players, very good. And we should just we should just let them play the game. I can. I really think I should just tell them we should start. Yeah, yeah, do it. Make it happen. What is the format? Obviously, this is the grand final, so is it best of three? Uh, not well, kind of. Um, we play with the European format, and we get um two maps, and if they win both, that's obviously meaning that they will take the grand finals. But if one team takes one and the other team takes one, then we're gonna move on to the third map. But after that, um, we're just gonna settle with like golden caps and stuff. Okay. Are the maps preset? Like I know we're starting on Gullywash here, but are the other maps preset or is it like loser's pick? Uh, it's preset. So we have Gullywash first, and then we're gonna play Viaduct next, and for the um, tiebreaker we're playing Snake Water. And the admins pick the maps, not the teams. <laughs> it's been it's been just tradition to do it like that. So what um, if you are just... best friends with the admin and you're like, yeah, we want Gullywash first, please? <laughs> Corruption. <laughs> It's just corrupt. I know backhanders. Just a brown envelope full of cash money, and you get your map. That's how you work, Shunik. Don't deny it. <laughs> well, since yeah. we're we're live, I'm not gonna say anything, and you're not gonna hold me to anything. <laughs> so, uh, it's what were the maps again? Gully wash first, then Vide up next, and last is Snake Water. I can't argue with your map picks. Well, maybe Snake Water people may like, but Gully wash and Viaduct always good games. Uh, yeah. I see 11 players on the server. Who's missing? Somebody's just disappeared. Um, looks like TJ's disappeared. I'm not sure where he went. But I've told both teams that we're ready to go, so... It should be, should be starting quite soon. You guys had a LAN event in March, right? Oh yeah, the LAN... We had actually quite the upset, but... Uh, I don't know if it's actually called an upset, because they had kind of like a different roster. FFS played in the LAN, and I think they got third place instead of expected like second or something um and they got taken um and like uh, one of the teams that we consider not as good taking quite a few maps from them and yeah i don't know maybe it has affected them psychologically but <laughs> it's quite hard to say they've been was playing that the first ever yesterday. asia fortress land mm -hmm. or did you guys land before well it's the f yeah i guess you could say that um, we didn't actually really plan it to be an Asia Fortress line, it was kind of like a last minute decision. But yeah, we've taken the name Asia Fortress and um, they initially thought that it was good to kind of differentiate themselves and have a different name for the land. But I guess for the sake of unity, we just ended up calling it Asia Fortress land. Alright, I need you to help me with my pronunciation. I'm going to try it one more time. Lee Jong Boom. <laughs> I guess that's good enough. It's nah, good enough. it's not good enough. <laughs> we'll call him LJB, and for freak's yeah. sake, oh, it looks like we're going yeah. live here. So if you've just joined us, this is Team Fortress TV, bringing you the Asia Fortress Mercenaries Cup Five Final. It's LJB versus FFS. Take me to the first middle, Commander X. I'm um, zooming to the first middle here. Both teams rolling out. Uh, looks like both teams want to come in the valley side. Looks like, for Freak's sake, I've got the high ground fast from again the first pick on Babel as well. They're getting a lot of high ground, so I'm just going to get onto the nipple right now, but he's being counter-jumped right now. Uh, wide goes all the way deep onto the Medic, and now 
Uh, the Korean team has the heal advantage and they've got the high ground as well. They pick off uh, two players right now uh, and they are going to fight on the floor and OZR getting a free man right there, cleaning everything up and only Rufus left alive and uh, he's stuck in. I think he's going to get peppered down. The scouts are trying to chase him. He's down to 30 HP. The scouts are trying to go into lower lobby, but I think he might just about squeeze out of this one. Well, if he dies now, it'd be very... he does survive. He will meet his medic, but that bomb from wide on middle was very timely, really shut down any intention FFS had of going forward. Uh, they lost their medic as well during that, so big uber damage here for W4K... For W40K life, Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> he's, oh, they're going to uber in top right with two scouts here. They're looking for frags, but the Pyro is doing a decent job of denying them here. Uh, Toshihiko will go down. Toshihiko will go down, but uh, look at Wade coming in from the submarine plays. Uh, working his way up, distracting, but they're trying their best to stay in the point, but the scouts of the blue team are cleaning up. OZR will be the last, and he's going to get the cap. Yeah, big day from the scouts there from LGB, uh, OZR and HSK. All the letters right now. Uh, they really just like, uh, they just had all the frags set up for them. They hit all their shots, cleaned everything up. Uh, but Freak's Tech had a good start in that middle, but that wide bomb really sort of picked them apart. They just like they want to go up right hand side. This time, I'm going to go straight into LGB. They force the no man out right now. Uh, meanwhile, the soldier combo is taking the other side. Uh, first frag goes to OZR, and for Freak's Tech are a man down again. Uh, there's now a, a player underneath them and players coming from the front and they're kind of surrounded. The scout's going to try and flank now but he gets double piped by Rufus. Soldier's going to bomb in now and for freak's sake are back in the corner again just for combo left alive. But I believe they're at the enemy choke aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are uh, behind enemy lanes right now. But they're going to have to give chase here whilst the CP4 cap timer begins. Looks like they're not even... Are they going to contest? They are coming to big door. I thought they might go lower lower but the scout comes out and now they're going to uber in here. But they cannot they don't have see Toshihiko. Uh, they're oh. kind of wasting a super, but W W forty K life uh, doesn't have it. They are going to lose two players. But a big denial air shot from Babel right there to send that soldier back. As I believe we go into an early pause. Yeah, it looks like a pause to me. I don't see any connection warnings, but uh, yeah, <laughs> they tried to kill the medic there instead of that sort of Uber and killer scout. Mm. They. They've been in a strong position right now, but as it stands, the point is halfway capped. They're about to get Ubered on. It's more or less uh, an even fight. Those uh, LJB scouts are going to spawn back pretty quickly and be back into the fight, or scout and demo, I should say. But I think, for freak's sake, need to be sort of looking for the exit or getting up top real quick. I reckon they can get the force out, though. Like, um... LGB don't have the demo man, they don't have a scout. They have two soldiers at choke and one scout at big door. So that scout at big door can't really come in at uh, in through choke. So it's really up to the soldiers to do all the work here at choke. But obviously, without the demo man to lock any doors down or deny anything, it's going to leave them a lot more vulnerable, especially with a numbers disadvantage as well. Yeah, uh, Shunik, what's, uh, what's happening with the teams? Have you got any inside information? <laughs> Uh, no. I've just been told that it's definitely a pause, but I tried asking them for more information and they've been holding out on me. To keep us in the dark here, it's uh, the Asian <laughs> mystery right now. There's been a disconnect on the Orient Express, but I don't know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, We're going live! Yeah, uh, they actually popped the Ibrat choke there. They're going in early, but there's only one soldier for them to shoot at. Uh, the other soldier gets awfully weak here. Uh, Messi pushed really so far. They lose wide early on. And now LGB lose a scout as well. The medic's just completely stranded in. The medic's just trying to cap the point, but they all jump him. The medic's gonna get absolutely demolished and for freak's sake. Uh, convincingly win that push. We thought it was gonna be an even fight, but it wasn't even close. Yeah, they just destroyed them right there. Maybe a, a little bit of an overcommittal from our blue team LGB before they actually uh, had you know, the numbers back up. They had loads of time, it was a massive advantage. Here comes Wade in from below though, he finds a lot of players on the point. He's gonna drop rockets onto a soldier. He's trying to get the medic right at the end, but he will go down. He's gonna be a bit frustrated by that one. And uh, the man advantage continues to be in favor of, for freak's sake, they're gonna be able to move quickly ahead here. They're just regrouping on middle and healing up their players. But look at this, a massive uber advantage. Uh, W40K life has only just started healing up again and he's 70% uh, behind in this uber race. There's a lot of stickies on the balcony. TJ jumps up avoiding the stickies but goes down and uh, will they try and force here? No, it looks like 
but they're just gonna back off. Blue team goes back to last year's CX. Yeah, only 60% on W40K life, and they're gonna Uber in right now. The second cap has fallen as well. They've got one, only got one frag so far, but again, all that four times cap on the point. I'm just gonna clean that one and get a, a good round back there. They got pushed all the way back to their CP2, but came back strongly and made uh, LGB really, really punish them for that mistake. And we've got a 1-1 game on our hands here, 25 minutes remaining on the clock and uh, I see Creep rolling out to choke and he's already been pre-fired with his sticky there but doesn't take the damage, it looks like for Freak to do the right hand side push here, they're getting aggressive, the demo man Rufus is forcing by Creep but Creep is still on a half health here with wide around their choke so that's two players effectively out of this middle if FFS can turn their attention to the blue medic, they do and W4K goes down and it looks like they've pick two fights here, they're fighting on two fronts, but their medic is still alive, King is with his uh, pocket able here, they're trying to deal with these Oof. scouts, the scouts just run at him wow. and he cleans up. Yeah, it looked, it looked like a bit of trouble there when the pocket kind of went forward into the scouts and the medic just kind of walked back the other way, it looked like they could get caught separated, but Abel landed all his uh, rockets and got this pretty easily, but it does look like a soldier wide coming in through drop down again, he's been called, he jumped one rock on the medic, down to 70 health, down to 20 health, he holds it really well, brave medic in from King and Lionheart, and they're going to have a fully bred advantage for the CP2 push. Yeah. Yeah, she's just gone to pick up a med pack. I've been told by Shinnick that King and Lionheart is in fact a girl. Ooh, I'm blushing. But, uh, <laughs> Put it away, Ants. <laughs> what is that about women playing medic? Yeah. Uh, there we go. They're, they're coming in right now. They pick creep again. That's twice on the CP2 defense. Creep's been picked off, and it looks like Abel and his medic want to go straight to last. They've got Krabby Patty with them as well. Uh, they do lose Rufus. Demo Man on the push, and the Ubers are going to be exchanged right now. They took too long and W40k life was able to get it back. They look like they want to stay for this Uber fight though. Abel's really committing to this. The rest of his team are coming. The scout and soldier come in. They do pick for Medic and they get another frag on the Demo Man. Creep dying a lot right now. They're clean, just cleaning up the frags right now. Though uh, so HSK gets one frag. Now it's just for one scout alive and the scout's going to chase for Medic right now. King and Lionheart down to 10 HP. Uh, she will go down and the scout's just cleaning up once again. Uh, this Rufus is surely going yeah, he's getting wrecked as well, and HSK and OZR just putting the team on their back right now. Uh, OZR pulled out a big play there, he uh, denied Toshihiko, he was trying to come in from below for the cap, but he just went in and destroyed him, still had full health afterwards. And then came, got the medic frag, and now they're pushing ahead here, into the middle point, having just taken second. Wide is already peeking at big two, he's drawing their eyes, but the scouts are in for free, but TJ's hiding up on the little ledge, drops down onto W40K life, and he has just had his life ended. But how will this oh. play out for, for Freak's sake? I'm not sure, CX. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, LGB are going to still keep going for it. The soldier bombs are coming in. Medic down to 80 health. Roller's coming in as well, but no one's landing for damage. The demo's at choke. There is a scout behind both the scouts coming from choke. Uh, they've already pushed a big door, though, and the scout's now just kind of caught out in the middle ground. He's going to pick a scout 1v1 on the middle point, but a, he wins for one-on-one, -on -one, but there's another scout coming in, he's down 7 HP. Krabby Paddy will clean that one up. Meanwhile, the rest of, for freak's sake, have just taken CP2, and LGB just went for it there after they lost their medic, just went to trade, but it really wasn't enough pressure, pressure on King and Lionheart. Here come FFS from the lobby. Uh, a rocket from that mid entrance will force the medic off the pyro of HSK has appeared on the field but he's not really close to the doors to be able to reflect much. Looks like he's going for the flame damage but the frags are looking good right now for LJB. It's only Toshi Hiko, last man alive. This scout surrounded by pyro demo and the scout will go down. And uh, FFS despite having that big uber advantage just got turned over on Gully Watch last and that's something you've seen so many times. Yeah, really, it just seemed like the focus fire from For Freak's Sake was wrong. It looked like the Uber in was focusing one thing while the flank were focusing different things. So nothing really died quickly enough. And it meant that they were able to play off their heels and LGB were able to push back out. And now they have an Uber advantage, but they have to do the difficult push from two to middle. And it looks like they want to go big door side. They're just spamming though. Uh, for Freak's Sake know exactly where they're coming from, but they're still letting them in. They do pop kind of early without a lot of pressure on, but the soldier's really far back here. Maybe was going to have a really hard time getting much done with the Zuba. There is a soldier behind, which we might be able to pick. They pick the Roma off. 
There's a scout on Bedemon Man lower. Creep will hit a nice pipe to clean that up as well. A back cap has been started for Freak's sake. Want to come back here, but there's no pressure on the point. They can't stand on it in time to block it. The middle goes to LGP, but they're fighting two fights right now. The soldier behind is cleaned up by HSK, and the rest of the Freak's sake are just going to have to back out with that. Yeah, TJ did a good job going behind and uh, taking the attention, but Toshihiko died right after the Ubers had been traded. Like, he just ran forward into like four blue players and died. If he'd survived and used that distraction a little bit better, it could have worked out differently for him. But as it stands, uh, for Freak 6 sitting here with a 100% Uber charge, while his life is only just hitting that 50% mark, and they're like they're hoping for a bit of a leapfrog action here on middle. But for Freak's sake, they're so slow to, to move forward here. I think they've and maybe lost track of the uber situation or they're just wanting to make sure they're all fully buffed as they move in but uh, they are finally coming in but already the soldiers of FFS are pretty beat up uh, there's TJ on half health, Abel doesn't even have a buff right now as he goes into ch and now his medic King and uh, Lionheart has to pop off to save her two soldiers there and there comes the counter uber from life Abel's gonna go in to get that force, he's died, TJ's up top but nobody paid attention to the fact that that heal beam was going up there he drops down onto the medic, gets the third oh. rocket will kill him and that was crucial right there, I think, CX. Uh, yeah, really important pick, and now as for, for... They've lost their own medic as well, for freak's sake. It's just turned into a DM fight, just uh, one scout left fighting on the point, completely outnumbered. The soldier's about to arrive, but the soldier can't really go in here as Krabby Patty goes down. And I think um, the pick was good by, was it TJ who was hiding up top? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if it was the right choice to focus the medic. Like, he, he had like 10% charge, it's not a real threat. He had a good angle to shoot the demo man as well. I mean, there's a scout behind actually, Oza Badar got behind, didn't see how he got there, but he got some shots off on King and Lionheart, but she will survive and hold on to a 35% charge. My game just crashed, you know, keep telling me what's happening. <laughs> Uh, the Ubers are equal right now, but it looks like for Freak's sake, want to take it in from Big Door. They're trying to go without Uber, but they're taking a lot of spam as they come in. No one's really creating the space for them. They're just standing there and getting beat up. But TJ and Toshi Toshihiko combine at choke. Uh, it ends up being a trade as Odadar picks one up. And it's now 5v5. Both Ubers almost uh, fully charged. But you have to imagine that LGB are going to want to push with a spawn advantage and it looks like they're going to do that straight away. Both soldiers and a demo man through choke, no one really holding that close. Uh, the soldier's going to bomb in, going to force the Uber off. The Uber's multied uh, quite a bit, at least twice now I saw. And now for Freak's sake, going to have a better Uber, going to chase this through to choke. But a soldier jumps behind to create a distraction. He should be picked off, down goes Babel, but he has uh, stopped the push coming in. And they're going to have to heal up before they push here for Freak's sake. Come back yeah. in the land of the living, I can't oh, see. Uh, Roof yeah. was just... Wide just went huge. Just I uh, didn't see where it was. Was he in drop down or something? He just yep. comes up and he takes out the demo man and the medic. Of a pocket of the medic. Either way, he's opened the door completely for his team. And it's looking like a wipe right now. Only Toshihiko alive on middle. He's going to go for a hero play for the medic. But he's got a scout and demo man defending him. He's going to go for it anyway. He gets oh! medic when he oh! takes for medic. No way. Oh my god, huge medic pick there to save his team this last hold right there. I I literally, I thought it was over, I thought there was no way he's getting past this fully buffed scout, <laughs> fully buffed demo man. The medic was like nicely positioned in between both of them. He just yeah, goes was, for uh, it. Bizarre, you see uh, life with a bit of uh, grace and defeat says nice shot on the death chat. Toshi, he go with the tongue sticking out smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> And uh, now a big uber advantage again for, for Freak's sake, and they want to push out from their own last point. This can be tricky, but uh, looking at the delightful wall hacks we have courtesy of Blue, I see that there's nobody waiting for the back cap actually on the LJB side. They're all just playing super defensive, they're trying to get their own charge up here, and maybe neither team is going to push out after all, preferring the security of uh, Gully Wash last. Yeah, I mean, like, they've just got fully charged. They should have known they had Uber advantage because of a late medic pick, but they're all just content to sit on last. No one's going to really make any forward motions. And now W40K Life has got his charge. And it's going to be interesting to see how they want to push here. So at the moment, they've got all six players up top on Riverside. So I don't know if anyone's just going to pile through the same door and go for it. Uh, they <laughs> seem to be liberating right now. One soldier's going to go in. It looks like it's just a force wave. The heavy's up. He shoots the medic quite far back, but the medic's uh, King and Lionheart are able to surf him to spawn. She's going to be safe, fully charged, and now surely they're going to want to push out when it's super advantage. Uh, numbers advantage, even not uber advantage. Yeah, they could easily just uh, sacrifice one player here without any risk. Like if uh, TJ wanted to make a play, he's peeking into lobby actually, here he's going to go he's... lower, lower. Uh, I wonder if OZRC and anything there, he doesn't look like. He has, now he's going to walk in, tries to tag him with a rocket, but misses. Another scout comes in from 
the lower lower and he will actually kill him that's hsk going down to tj but ozr avenges him and it is five on five here and that's uh just gonna buy nothing at all really it's just a, a uh, pretty equal trade what they're gonna send another soldier in uh for the suicide but he just jumps back out it looks like they're gonna try and come in with a heavy right now wide swap to heavy when he died but he goes in uh the medics were able to uber him in time and this is an awful uber the uber's popped off Maybe more out of pity than actual desire by King and Lionheart. And now they're going to try and push this. They know Ubers. They're forced. They're all up on Riverside right now, LGB. And they're kind of getting not quite surrounded. No one's really flanking them, but they're being pressured back. Uh, they've still got the high ground bone. A nice pipe foe is going to catch up on that soldier. Babel should go down to the scout. He's really low on HP. The scout's going to defend him, but these players are going to get picked off. Down goes HSK. And LGB are just conceding more and more ground. Yeah, FFS are really bullying them here. They didn't like rush out and totally commit to it. They just slowly chipped away at them with a couple of nice pipes, and uh, their scouts were able to move forward and follow up on that. But as it stands, they have yet to make it out to begin capping CP4 much. And Babel, Life, and Creep are doing a great job of denying FFS and just buying time for these spawns to come up. There's going to be two players back up now. There's wide OZR in five seconds, but. FFS still fighting around this door and really not making it that far onto the point. Now Uber gets popped off. Life is going to be able to pop his off as well. But King and Lionheart popping uh, a little bit early there. Wanted to encourage her team to push, but they were already behind her in lobby. But now, it, as the Ubers fade, it, the fight continues. Look at the focus fire there, Beeble and uh, OZR putting down a lot of damage. Two frags apiece. It's 4 on 4 here, CX, and this is a. Uh, the most prolonged pick I've ever seen in Gully Wars. <laughs> I was about to say, there's a medic, there's a soldier behind as well. Uh, W40k life on 5 HP will arrow him down and protect himself. But they, it means the heroes were separated from the players trying to hold lobby. And that means, for freak's sake, are finally going to complete this, I don't know, minute and a half long push out into CP2. Time has been Woo! <laughs> Yay! Yeah, they did it though, and they've got themselves an uber advantage out of it as well. Uh, so they imagine they're going to want to keep taking this straight forward, not give a creep zone. just be spawned as well, and there's no stickies on the doors. That always makes it like a hell of a lot easier to come in. And looks like Rufus is already through early there. Here come the rest of the team. King and Lionheart almost has her uber up, and they're uh, spamming the players back. So much damage right now on the LGB side. They get three frags, but the medical was not one of them, and W40k life has 50%. But it, he is getting flanked right now. He's stuck up top. He's got to find someone to heal, he's on 90%. His soldier's going to go down 95%. Only him and the Demoman, they need to stay connected. He will pop it off in time. But now the Demoman has to do all the work. He has nothing loaded and just going to have to run away with this Uber. Complete waste of the Uber right there. And for freak's sake, you're going to get middle and CP2 for basically free. Uh, King and Lion are uh, Uber near the end of that initial mid fight. It was sort of like a suicide wave with those three blue players going in for the pop. But then uh, Life didn't manage to get himself in a a safe position and end up getting four themselves so it's uber advantage right now four for freak's sake very slight one but if they build and push right as they hit that 100 mark and they will have an opportunity to pick life if they can hit the shots but uh, right now we're going to see a sniper peeking out here from uh, the left hand side that's ozr on the defender's perspective but no heavy weapons guy this time shot comes in life over oh, 93 Oh. He's taken down. This is just a standard push for Freak's sake. Just need to focus fire now. Play around the heels. They're going to get a complete wipe. A really nice play from for Freak's sake. Not just on the last, but throughout. They just kept winning all the skirmishes from on every single point. Really just keeping themselves ahead. Keeping themselves on the advantage. And they're going to take the lead now. Yeah, smart Uber play as well. They recognised they had the slim advantage. Went straight for that medic. They were all gunning for life. Uh, watching the rollout here from Rufus. He comes... Uh, Big door then decides to go elbow. He's isolated at HSK on his own choke, but uh, meanwhile the bombman, uh, who was that? When TJ went flying across the point there and really distracted a lot of the blue players. They struggled to make it onto the point. He also uh, life went down there as well to Toshihiko, who followed up on TJ's bomb. But actually, for freak's sake, look like they're going to lose this one despite getting that early man pick. The counter bomb eventually there. From LJB just destroyed them. Yeah, it was creep, and I'm not sure who the other soldier was, but it was one of the soldiers, and they both bombed back in and really opened the door for their scouts to get in, and they just kept spamming up while their scouts were on them, and it just allowed them to clean everything up. And W40k life should have uh, uber advantage, but he didn't have anyone to build with. He's going to start building now, and that means the ubers are just equal. But it is a crit. It's a crit from W40k life. So we're going to see some crits action. I presume King and Lionheart. Uh, she's still on the standard uber beam. 
Mm -hmm. Yep, so it looks like it's just going to be a pretty much a standard small crits advantage, crit sing, kill the medic, kill some more people, easy game, easy life. Wow. It is just that easy, Shunik. Surely they're not going <laughs> to... No, there's, there's so many things that go wrong with the crit screen. Of course, uh, you're not invulnerable. That is the trade-off. And there's a sentry here on last. Uh, Pretty good counter to crits. Here it goes. Crits don't do Creeps uh, got it on him. Buildings. He's in a sticky trap though. <laughs> oh! That is one of the things that can go wrong when you crits in. Um, and this crits is now completely wasted. And for freak's sake, you're going to have an easy push out. Wide is hiding on the old, in the original Greg spot in top lobby. The medic's going to walk straight into him. Going to take a full rocket. Going to have to pop it off. The soldier will get air shot down by Abel, but he wide got what he wanted. And there is a scout hiding for a back cap. HSK is going down up top, but he is spotted. He's been called. I'm not sure if he's still going to go for it. I think he's going to challenge CP2 if his team can come back in. But uh, Rufus has the point, uh, the choke point locked down. And now that scout's just stranded behind. Ah, uh, they're still, uh, if they have remembered, they're still facing a crit screen here, and it's just about to come in. Rui choke that scout is distracting. Everybody's looking the wrong way. Creep has the option. He called for the crits. Popped off a couple of sticks, does tag the scout, Toshihiko goes down, but now his medic is under pressure, but uh, it won't be Creep who turns around to save, it's OZR with the crit scattergun, shuts down TJ and keeps life alive. Nice moves right now from W40k life, he, he made the soldier miss a couple of rockets and just gave OZR the chance, and now the soldier goes into love, oh. Why takes uh, the medic's life from her, right at the end right now, he will go down, but he'll take that trade any day of the week. And now they have a, an even bigger crits advantage, and all they have to do is not die to a sticky trap this time. If you have just joined us, guys, this is the Asia Forest Mercenaries Cup 5 Grand Final. It's Li Jong Boom versus For Freak's Sake. Team Forest TV with Admirable Commander X Shunik and John. There's only 10 minutes left here on this first map, Gully West, but after this, we will be going to Viaduct and potentially Snake War as well. It's a best of three here. The crits here has come, come in. Yeah, he's even in, but the pyro's reflecting well, and they're all gonna wipe. This crit really isn't working out well at all. I think they got the pocket soldier with a crit rocket or something, but that's all they got. Rufus is getting two. Uh, two more players have gone down as well. It's just wide and OZR. I don't know where OZR is. He's, but he's in from lower, lower. He's onto the medic. Lands a main shot. Oh, wow. He's just able to take it away right there. Uh, salvaging play, but I don't think it's gonna stop the CP2 cap going down. White's just uh, playing it defensively at choke, waiting for, waiting for more numbers. It looks like if the demo want to pressure over, just spamming the scouts off. And it should be pretty easy for LGB to re-push this with a heal advantage. Yeah, yeah, despite not having a, a medic, FFS did a good job of denying the, the big door re-push there. And life had to go all the way into choke. Life eats a rocket there as oh. TJ bombs in, but down to seven. What was that, a roller? No, no, he, he dodged this, like, he hit, caught, caught the first rocket, dodged the second one, and then the spam rocket, like the last rocket from TJ, hit the wall. Uh, he's going to get the health back and come back in now, and we're going to clean up a lot of players. Uh, and again, it looks good for LGB, but we've seen them botch this last push, I think, twice in a row now, maybe more? With the crits? Twice with the crits. Yeah, it was uh, all up to OZR last time to get that uh, last-ditch medic frag, but uh, look at this, TJ's peeking into the lobby here, trying to find life. But uh, he's trying to escape on 40 health. Scouts are going to hunt him down. Nobody was close to help him out there. And he's going to be dead for another 13 seconds. Here comes Uber, top right. It's both scouts again. It's OZR and HSK. The Sledgehammer through this shutter door. They're trying to get in here closer to the point. They're trying to find frags and they have all but annihilated the team as we get a little bit of a pause there. I'm going to give this one. Uh, to LJB. You're not putting Crappy Patty down from a six man on 86 <laughs> HP. Krabby Patty. Cra just, his name's Crab Pat, and you're just putting your love of SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> into the picture here. Then. It's clearly that reference. It's clearly it that. What other reference could it possibly be? It admirable? is actually Krabby Patty. See, I was paying attention to the pre-game ads. I wasn't still half asleep, just waking up, rolling out of bed five minutes late. I just wanted the kids to know that I, I know who SpongeBob SquarePants is and what a Krabby Patty is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, so I'm, cool. I'm sure the children across the world are rejoicing <laughs> that you got that reference as we go to the third mid. Tied up 2-2 in the first map of this grand final. Looks like for Freak's sake want to go at their own side right now, but they're having a lot of trouble with that scout. Down goes HSK. Meanwhile, the rest of the LGB team just didn't really feel like coming much further forward than Big Door. FFS are playing it cautious around their own choke because they have a crit streak. They want to make sure uh, their medic is alive. They're going to move that payload forward here. They're about to unleash crit, but there's nobody here for them to kill. LJB are up top on their own balcony. They surely have no idea. Well, they could have seen the crits, but... Yeah, uh, I think Rufus wants it. Rufus wants it. He's calling for his medic. 
Yeah, they're all up there. They pop though. They pop even before the crits has popped, and Rufus is going to go straight down. And now the, they're going to have to scatter now, right, for freak's sake. But they lose two. They're still getting that cap time though somehow. Uh, the rest of their players are coming in. It's a really messy fight. I'm not sure if it's wise for freak's sake to commit to this. And King and Lionheart has just ditched everyone. She knows. She knows where she should be. <laughs> She's run away. All oh, the way out of choke. Going to meet up with the respawning Rufus. They will have to concede middle, but because their medic stayed alive, they might even be able to get a crits advantage. They're not really building though. It'll probably be equal crits uh, against Uber again. Didn't work out well for them last time. It was sort of like the worst case scenario. Either want to crits first and be able to back off or uh, wait till the Ubers fade it and then crits, but they just thought, we'll stand right in front of them and let them Uber and then crits <laughs> and see what happens. But life splashes were good enough. I was on Rufus's point of view, and you could see like he was looking directly at them with his stick aimed at them. You could, but his medic wasn't on him. Like he could hit. I imagine he was just like begging for the crits in, uh, in mumble, just like please, please. I can see all four players right now. I can kill all of them. Here comes the crits again. We're gonna crits again. The Ubers popped again. No players being dropped. The flashes are good once again. Crit stickies being laid down, and they're just gonna have to slow it down and clean up these crit stickies before they try and push through. Uh, and now there's a bit of Uber, uh, spam exchange at Stoke. Abel's gonna get caught off. Uh, and I think they might want to keep holding strong despite the player disadvantage right now, but surely LGB are going to try and muscle their way in. They're taking a lot of damage when I come through this choke, but lockdown is perfect from Rufus. Yeah, this would be the uh, ideal moment to switch it up and move to the big door and try and crush the flank when that soda was dying. Here comes a bomb in though, and Babel has created space, jumping to the rock. Everybody is actually able to just walk in here as uh, LJB just muscled their way in. They strong armed those guys. And now I have control of the point. It's time five. Chris is going crits. out. Both scouts are going to go down. But Chris isn't able to reach anyone else. And we're going into another pause right now. <laughs> Look at no all those problem. rockets flying. Uh, it looks like, I imagine, the air rocket is going to be a wall rocket. It's not going to kill Rufus. But that, I don't know what the trajectory of that crit sticky is in the air. Like, is it going to land on Babel's head? Or is it just going to whiz past him? Maybe... If he did it, he could just about catch him with the, the radius. You know, stickies are overpowered. Yeah, he's mid-air as well, Val. Oh, uh -oh. here comes the up pause. The crit sticky doesn't get him, though, but it's be switched on to Abel, who picks up one. And it's just for Demon Man and Medic here. They are pretty close to Uber. WK40 Life's going to try and surf out on low HP. Won't be able to survive, but Demon Man's going to get cleaned up by TJ as well. And for freak's sake, we've uh, just about made that crits work. Yeah, life died on, on, like, 45 Uber. You mean 95? Oh, yeah, 95. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did I say? So 45. close! You said 45. Oh. I was like, ah, oh, 45, so close. Just another 22 seconds and I would have got it. Oh. But yeah, it was awfully close. Look at OZR here, sniping from the forward spawn. He's trying to find it ahead, but Wide has already just gone in and killed King and Lionheart. Didn't get the memo that uh, the sniper OZR wanted, the big hero headshot. <laughs> Yeah, and it looks like for Freak's sake, still trying to want to try and get through this choke, but with no heals, it's pretty risky. That soldier's going to take a load of damage as well. TJ will get a pick on the flank, which might slow him down. Is TJ actually behind? He's up top, isn't he? He's up top on Riverside behind, and he's just going to try and do all the delaying tactics he can. He's going to meet a soldier, going to try and one-on-one -on -one the soldier. The other soldier's just going to run back to spawn, though. Conservative 1v1. He's going to now jump back, but he finds the rest of the enemy team at Riverside. He's going to keep trying to jump away, but he's low on health. He will go down, but he has bought... Uh, Plenty of time for, for Freak's sake to get set up on middle. Yeah, still 75% uh, Uber disadvantage. Nobody's running crits right now. As uh, uh, Life is encouraging his team to move through the blue choke. He definitely doesn't want to pop here. He knows he's a big advantage. And looking at the body language of the red team, he can see that they do not want to contest him either. So he's able to hold that charge well played. And they can cap here. They would be wise to continue to push and use this Uber advantage. But it looks like they want to go big door and try and cut them off before they've even made it into the spawn door and this is smart they're going for the big white play here they're trying to get an HSK gets a frag onto TJ he's trying to push forward into the lobby but oh they're just gonna stop they're happy to turn around clean up any frags behind and cap the point but King and Lionheart's about to Uber here CX even though they're two down yeah Rufus gets picked off up top but they're going for it anyway Wide gets a double frag up top while this Uber comes out and gets two frags but Wide's now up top behind them and they have uh, a scout and a dome man coming through choke but Soldier's going to jump to deny but he's completing himself nice arrow by King and Lionheart to keep him healthy keeping him in the fight right now uh, no, can't end any more though and he will go down and that pick is probably going to settle this there's a soldier fight up top as well but TJ should be able to escape from this uh, Uber advantage for W40k life and there's two minutes left and it's currently tied to all
Oh, here comes the NG again. It's going to be Toshihiko putting a sentry gun up there beside the crates. Uh, OZR is about to respawn as well for LZB. He may choose to off-pass. No, looks like he's going to stay scout. Grab Patty. He's dead right now. So man advantage option here for LJB to push and they are going to take that. Here comes it's the for Uber solo heavy right Uber. <laughs> <laughs> he missed it since 2009 but he's going for it. He gets one frag and he gets the sentry gun. He's going to get on the point and he still has 450 health on the point. It's going to be so hard to stop him. He gets one frag. He, yeah, just the old school Uber where you Uber the heavy and all he does is walk towards the point and keep his buff. Worked perfectly there. And the only downside to them capping that round is they caps it pretty quickly, so there's still time for, for Freak's sake to get a round back. Yeah, you really need uh, instant focus fire to deal with that heavy as soon as the Uber is off him. But uh, he just got himself into position and it seemed to be checkmate from there, but right now it's 3-2 in favour of LJB onto this sixth middle. And uh, there's OZR and TJ both going down, so it's uh, 5 on 5 here, but Big bomb in from wide is gonna find a frag. No, it's actually Beeble got the other frag, but for freak's sake, now with only Rufus alive, life has managed to stay alive on the LGB side, but Rufus is coming in from below. He's trying to spam up to the point. He needs that medic frag to keep his team in the game here. The arrow's getting popped off. HSK has got the melee out, but. Uh, oh, Rufus... the sniper is sticky. He throws one all the way up to choke as he's leaving. Takes. Takes down the challenge of a melee out, and they're going to keep trying to push through choke. WK40 doesn't have it, and we'll go down thanks to the work from Krabby, Paddy, and TJ. And they're pushing back right now, but I think time might be against them. 18 seconds left. <laughs> True. There's creep jumping up behind, but OZR steals his frag. Gets a third up. That's actually a 4k right now. OZR is uh, just going ham here in the dying seconds of this round. He wants to pad his stats as much as possible. There we yeah, have it. and there we go, and there's the time limit, LGB are going to take the first round in this best of three. Uh, and it was close, uh, like honestly, on the balance of everything, I think for Freak's sake, played for better TF2. You think this know, was uh, an unjust result? I think the scoreline does in no way reflect the TF2 that we saw on the field. I was hoping to see some uh, logs popping up there, but uh, these Asians don't seem to use TF2. Will there be any logs, Shunik? Uh, we typically use SS, but it seems like the server is not too configured. Damn it! Oh, look, they've got source mod on there. Friendly fire is disabled. Uh, well, that's the Good important thing. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> the important thing is there's no friendly fire going on. <laughs> oh, the debate comes out for are they going to Viaduct RC4 or Viaduct RC3? Oh, there oh, is a log. There is a Logs log. are available. I'm opening up my log folder right now. My log. I found the log. Okay, I'm looking at some stats. Creep hitting the top damage, 352 a minute, followed by these uh, fellow demo man Rufus on 345. Nothing really between there. Uh, the one thing I do notice is just the KD on the scouts for LGB is considerably higher than for Freak's sake. I'm just about to uh, open up the log. Uh, yeah, basically what we're looking at is OZR has 37 to 18, HSK 23 to 18, and meanwhile Krabby Paddy has 18 to 21, and Toshiiko has 14 to 22. Look at gonna... life as well, uh, four frags on many. <laughs> One death less than uh, King and Lionheart. Uh, let me check out these stats. Both medics using that crit screen, but uh, maybe life slightly edging it out there with that one less death was that the, the crucial factor maybe the mid fights as well it was four mid wins for lgb to two from uh ffs and i guess yeah like, well all the good Is play it? from for freak's sake like over the two rounds they got they did push them back from their own cp2 all the way to last and while that is good if you're conceding all the mids you're putting yourself on, a, on the back foot before you've even really started Mm, 